Hi there. Many thanks for joining us on the sweet spot. It's the Racing Post's weekly golf show with Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer. Here's what's coming up in an action-packed 30 minutes or so. Three fantastic tournaments for you this week. First of all, we will look back on what, for me, was one of the best tournaments to be held on these shores in many a year. The BMW Championship, PGA Championship at Wentworth. I thought it was really, really brilliant. A very strange, very different and in many ways sad week, Steve. But uh, it was a lovely, heartwarming finish, wasn't it? And congratulations to you. Obviously, you nailed the winner in Shane Lowry. So what did you make of it all? I think you summed that up very well. Yeah, it was a very sad, sad start to the week, wasn't it? The Queen's passing. I mean, yeah, I was affected by that much more than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, you know, she's a superstar and we, we'll miss her greatly. And then by the end of the week, we, you know, we, we dealt with that. You know, most of us had dealt with that. And, um, you know, Shane Lowry was, was fantastic. You know, as you say, a really thrilling event, a really tight tussle. Um, yeah, I'm glad we didn't do a sweet spot live. You know, we we, we cancelled out of uh, respect to Her Majesty, and I think it was the right decision because I, um, yeah, you know, I, I was finding I was finding it a bit too much on Sunday. I must admit. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was thinking how brilliant it would have been if we'd done the show. Do you oh, think don't. you would have been able to hold it together? No. <laughs> it was crazy scenes in my house. Yeah, the kids were going bananas in in, in the living room. Uh, Tommy Tiger was sort of feeding off the tension. You know, he always feeds off my tension, and he was coming at me with like golf tees and all sorts of other weapons. As, as, yeah, as Larry's goodness. going up the last couple of holes. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really, really wanted Larry to win, as you say. You know, we've been building something here. You know, Sir Callum Shinkwin, Rory McElroy, Dustin Johnson, Shane Larry, you know, going up a level each time. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was glad we weren't on and, 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 and God save the Queen. Uh, and yeah, the most fraught moment, I suppose, was the tee shot at 17, which looked like it was disappearing into the woods and, and out of sight, wasn't it? And he actually uh, dropped a little S bomb, which for the first time in the history of Sky Sports didn't get didn't merit an apology. I mean, <laughs> do you remember that time when one of the Italian players swore in Italian and they <laughs> and they apologised for that? Yeah. So I was, that was that was incredible. They didn't um, apologise for that, but more importantly, he managed to find his ball, fashion a, a shot out of that, got his par, and then terrific on the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have missed the, uh, the, the the swearing there. I was doing doing some swearing of my own. But yeah, 17 looked a bit dodgy, didn't it? And then uh, 18, he played it so well, didn't he? I mean, that second shot was so pure. Because, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a gimme from the position he was in there. Yeah, there's loads of trouble left. You can destroy your chances left. You have to hit a, a fantastic goal shot. Perfectly drawn five iron, two putt birdie, and then yeah, you know, thank goodness Rory did the decent thing and uh, missed the eagle putt. Can you, know? can you just? I, obviously, we didn't do sweet spot live, but if we had, what would your? Can you reenact what you would have been like as Rory's eagle attempt trundled towards the hole? <laughs> <laughs> I celebrated very, very, very enthusiastically, but then I gave it a bit like a var moment in many ways because I wait just to make sure I wasn't going to tickle in. It was so close, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, I, I gave it a couple of seconds before I fully, un, un, you know, started embracing family members. Um, uh. because, um, yeah, it was a huge moment for, for, for me personally. And uh, yeah, a big moment for Shane Larry because it's been a frustrating year for him. Um, you know, he had, that was his first title of the year. And um, you could tell how hungry he was and how delighted he was. And, you know, we're talking about him being in the form of his life. Difficult one for people to understand when he's got no silverware on the mantelpiece from this year. But they, they, Rory talked about it. Shane I was going to say that Rory did talk about it, didn't he? He said he's putting together one of his best every years. It just wasn't reflected, which is exactly what you said on Tuesday when some other idiot was making silly faces and, and doubting your, your wisdom. <laughs> this is it. It's just consistency in all departments. There's not a department of Larry's game that you can look back on with anger this year. It's been a really polished display. Uh, and yeah, that was a clinic he gave at Wentworth. He didn't drop a shot all week. 54 holes. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Bogey free on a, you know, we mentioned all the trouble spots. He, his course management was magnificent last week and he didn't putt particularly well. He didn't have to putt particularly, particularly well to win. He'd be on my list of people I've never met that I'd like to have a pint with. Would he, you, you, would you like to he buy would. him a foaming glass of ale? I would. I'd like to go on a Guinness session with Shane Lowry if, uh, if, if, he, if he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. But I thought it was really nice, actually, because him and Rory, you know, they called it one for the good guys. And it absolutely was, wasn't it? None of those horrible live people. Uh, and we'll talk about that again in a minute because there's something I need to get off my chest. But the embrace at the end there and. The sort of little theatrical from Rory, you rascal, you know, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved all that. I thought it was really, really good. It was great banter from two great mates who are at the top of their game, aren't they? I mean, Rory McIlroy, like Larry, 
is, is never been a better all-rounder than he is now. Yeah, Rory's really sharpened up his approach play. Uh, I'd say they're both at the peak of their powers. And we have to give John Rahm props because that was a, a terrific return to form. What a lovely final round he put together, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's a dictionary definition of putting the willies up up us, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, that, 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 that back nine was it eight under par back nine on yeah. Sunday. With a bogey. Yeah. <laughs> With a bogey. Yeah, really impressive. I mean, John Rahm is world number six. I mean, that's that's an anomaly, isn't it? Yeah, world number six. He's he's better than that. He has had a poor year, though, Steve, hasn't he? Unlike unlike Lowry, um, Rahm hasn't had much silverware this year, but he, he hasn't really deserved it. He just hasn't played very well, has he? Yeah, but, yeah, he's been firing kids out. His wife's been firing kids out left, right and centre. I, I think this has been, a, you know, a, a, as you say, an underperforming year on the course for, for Rahm. Uh, but I think there's only one way he's going from world number six. Brilliant. Anyone else you want to discuss? I'd like to discuss Thomas Detry, who, who finished fifth last week. Yeah, yeah, DP World Tour made and we back many times. Yeah, that, that was a good effort in a high class field. And I think it's worth mentioning that JP. You've got your man on the bag, hasn't he? Now? Absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and JP did a similar thing with Victor Perez. You know, Victor Perez won soon after JP came on. Yeah, really experienced, successful bag man. You know, is, is, is JP going to you know, do the same trick for Thomas Detry? It's entirely feasible. OK. Now, let's talk about what uh, Sergio Garcia is doing to his reputation, because, I mean, he's turned from, you know, a much loved member of the, you know, the European golf uh, elite and Ryder Cup player to an absolute nightmare. I mean, he skulked off and, and shot over to, to Texas to watch a football game, you know, hours after shooting a 76, just pulled out of the tournament without any kind of medical excuse, which you need. He's just yeah. he's just turned into a right little horrible individual hasn't he by the look yeah. of it i mean he was the one who was the biggest spoiled brat beforehand always moaning about the tour first one onto the live yeah oh, what? sergio come on my friend it's not all about pounds you had so much respect and you're just blowing it it's just yeah. all going everyone now is just thinking who is this guy why is he behaving like this come on my friend pull yourself back together you were much loved and you, you're not doing yourself any favors yeah yeah him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope Shane and Sergio are both watching. We yeah. don't want to. We don't want to quaff Guinness with Sergio Garcia. I don't think he'd be a be a drink one. I mean, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's gone right down in my estimation. It's not um, good, yeah, is he, it, Steve? I he, mean, you know, he's got all the money he ever needs. Surely you want a bit of esteem and you want to be fondly remembered, don't you? Yeah, and I think he's deliberately winding people up for some reason now. I mean, he disgraced himself in a European tour locker room not that long ago, didn't he? Robert Robert McIntyre commented. Uh, uh, you know, he did a disgraceful rant telling everyone they're all. I believe some, you know, he, 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 he's always been petulant. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of him as a character, actually, but uh, now, now I, you know, I actively despise him. And that, 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 that pitch you mentioned at the, at the football game, was it an American football game? Mm. I saw that he even did one of them pose like that. I mean, what does that even mean? You're not blooming Spock or you're not going to Star Trek, are you? <laughs> I just think he's an all round toss pot now, actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well, that make the edit. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think you spelling out the word that, that he said might not make the edit, but we'll see. Okay, we'll see we'll what see. producer Will can do with that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Should we look at forward rather than backwards? I think we should because we've got three tournaments this week. We're on a roll and we're all very excited. Are you licking your lips? Yeah, yeah, really, really, really. I can't lick them hard enough. OK, mate, brilliant. You want to start with the DS Automobiles Italian Open, I believe, don't you? Normally, I sort of chide you for that because it's part of your kind of OCD and you like to do them in chronology. But if we look at the field, it's a fantastic lineup this year. Here are some indicative prices for you. The aforementioned Rory McIlroy is playing. Isn't that fantastic? He's round about four to one. You might seven to two, four to one. Matt Fitzpatrick, 10 to one. Victor Hovland, 12s. 20 to 1 Tyrrell Hatton. What a field we've got. 22, the local hero Francesco Molinari. 33 to 1 Steve's neighbour's mate Adrian Moronk. And then we've got Minwoo Lee. What a funny week he had last week. He's 40s. So is Jordan Smith. Zanotti, 45. Mansell, 50. And then we're into the sort of usual um, Europe, uh, DP World Tour cast. So fantastic tournament. Really looking forward to it. Starts early on Thursday. Where is it, Steve? And what kind of test does it provide? We're at the Marco Simone Golf Club in Rome, 7,268 yards, par 71, three par fives. This track took over as host last year. Next year, it will stage the Ryder Cup. It's a Blimey. tree-lined it's a tree-lined stadium course, lots of dog legs, lots of water, undulating greens, made for quality ball strikers, I think, particularly where there's a little bit of breeze for the first three rounds. 
would that be half the reason that we've got these big names here? They're just having a little bit of a getting some course knowledge for the Ryder Cup next year? Very much so, John. Yeah, course debut for Rory McIlroy, course debut for Victor Hovland. OK, so who should it suit? Which kind of player? I want strong ball strikers. I think it's a decent test. You know, 13 under par winning score last year. You know, three days of consistent breeze. Uh, the first three days this week. OK, brilliant. How many selections? Four right. <laughs> that worked last week, didn't it? <laughs> it, it, it you well, added the it? right to show that you had the right selections. Didn't Absolutely. You? Yeah, I didn't want to get too carried away. You know, you've got to, be, you've got to show our respect. Yeah, it's a difficult week, but um, yeah, 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 four right. Yeah, that was a good four, Steve. I thought you got the pitch just right on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Who's the headline? It is an old sweet spot regular. It's Rasmus Hogard, 50 to one. I think the Marco Simone is going to be lit up by a Hogard brother again. Last year was all about the Hogards. Rasmus Hogard won the European Masters the week before the Italian Open. Nikolai Hogard won the Italian Open. The history-making Hogards won back-to-back -back weeks on the DP World Tour. I think Rasmus is going to add an extra twist to that story this week by taking the title off his brother. Rasmus, clearly a world beater in the making. Still only 21 years of old, as we like to say on the on the sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's already got three DP World Tour victories under his belt. Recent signs really encouraging. He's had some injury niggles this year. I think he's over them now. He's combined stateside golf with his DP World Tour schedule. Never easy. But the Scottish Open in July... It's a big clue that he's ready to win again. He finished tenth in that. That was a top class event, high class lineup. Finished tenth, and in the, the last his last two starts, he opened with a 63 in the maiden Himalayan. Finished 22nd last week. Three rounds in the 60s for a share of 18th place at Wentworth. Hogard is getting back in business. Last year at the Marco Simone, obviously arrived straight after that Cranthier victory. <laughs> Um, yeah, mental hangover from Switzerland. Made a slow start, got sharper every day, finished 18th this time. I think he's peaking for the Italian Open. Cool. You make a very strong case there for Rasmus Hogard. Don't forget, if you do fancy Steve's main selection, do make sure you get the right Hogard. Unless, of course, he's tipping the other one as well. We'll see. Who's your second tip? The next tip is Guido Migliosi, 80 to 1. I was literally shocked. When I, when, I, when, I looked, when I looked at the, the prices for this, I went, <laughs> I, saw, yeah, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I just think it's a disrespectful price. My hair was standing on end. I mean, I know we got three big guns at the head of the betting, but can you make Miglio's in 80 to one shot for this? You know, he, he's got Back star in form, isn't he? He's, yeah, he's, and he's got star quality of his own. You know, he, he's got the X factor. You don't finish fourth on your US Open debut unless you've got the X factor, did you? And that's what he did last year. Did and he really? He finished fourth in his US Open debut last year. He rocked up at the same tournament this year and finished 14th, despite being in poor form in the builder. That was the turning point for him this year, that US Open effort. He's back in business. He had a really quiet start to the year. He was wearing glasses, if you remember right. He was experimenting, he was experimenting with the spectacles. He got rid of them. And now he, he, he's looking back like the old Guido. And last week, it just confirmed it for me. You know, did you see what happened last week? Three rounds of 68. Um, yeah, really solid. Three rounds of 68 for 13th place at Wentworth. Uh, he's gone back to his homeland in great heart. Uh, he's a, he was a prolific winner of events in Italy as a junior and as, a, as, a, as an amateur. He's won on the three... Alps Tour, wasn't it? Oh, and on, and on, yeah, on the Alps Tour. Yeah, he's won three times on the Alps Tour in Italy. Uh, he loves performing in his homeland. He, he's not one of these shrinking violets who's going to go, ooh, they all want me to do well. Um, <laughs> he's going to say, come on, let's have it. He's like a gladiator, isn't he, in, in, in Rome, of all places. Brilliant. Wow, what an excellent case you make for Guido Migliosi. Um, oh, I always get that mixed up with Mig Migliosi. But anyway, you know the one I mean. Right then, who yeah. else have we got? We're going to go back. Someone you've already mentioned, actually, Min Woo Lee. Min Woo Lee is 40 to 1, despite a really encouraging Wentworth performance. Yeah, I've got some fantastic young talent on my side this week. If you spoke to Rory McIlroy and, and said to him, you know, let's talk about Rasmus Hogard and Min Woo Lee, I think he, he, he'd get the jitters. He knows they're a long term threat in the biggest competitions. Uh, I think Min Woo Lee will develop into a major champion. I know I sound a bit like a broken record, but I think the point needs to be made. And he's already shown his class in the majors this year. Look at his major performance this year. Masters debut in April, finished 14th. US Open debut in June, finished 27th. His second Open Championship start in July, finished 21st. You know, he's a man for the big occasion. He's a two-time DP World Tour champion. The last of them was a Rolex Series event. Uh, yeah, this is a class act. He's so classy. 
Close, so classy, in fact. He spent Friday at Buckingham Palace. I know, I was going to say that. I was going to say he, he, he could be an official sweet spot fine young man for that interview, <laughs> couldn't he? I, I thought yeah. that was a lovely interview he gave. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. you got some players on Friday you know, working on their swing. Yeah, he did the right thing. He went to Buckingham Palace and paid his respects to her majesty. So did Antonio Conte turn out yesterday, the Tottenham manager. He went to Buckingham Palace on Friday as well. So Oh, there you go. Well, he's an Are you planning spot. on coming up for the, for the uh, either to, to see the Queen lying in state or the funeral? Are you going to go? I, 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 I might have some President's Cup to deal with. Um, yeah, if they cancel the President's Cup, which they should... Then, um, then I'll, um, then I'll, then I'll get up there. But uh, yeah, no, 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 no plans as yet. But yeah, I'm, I'm a massive Queen fan. Um, yeah, yeah, she has such a dignified. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't get me started on the Queen. I, I might, um, I might never finish. Okay. Well, um, then, I mean, I'm trying, we? Min- of, uh, I'm trying to think of a seamless way to go back to Minwoo Lee. But <laughs> well, he was paying his respects to the Queen on yeah, the Friday, was, yeah, and yeah, then on the yeah. Saturday, on the Saturday, yeah, on the Saturday, he shot 62 at Wentworth. Yeah, this is a really difficult golf course, and he, he scoots around in 62 shots. Amazing round of golf. He's been producing these bursts of scoring. Um, he started the Corn Ferry Tour finals last month with a 63 in the Boise Open. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he's just not been stringing four rounds together. But the Marco Simone, good opportunity to do that. He finished 12th there last year. There's a lot of course debutants in this field. Minwoo can hit the ground running. And, and that breeze will have him licking his lips as well. We're all licking our lips this week. Excellent. So we've got three at fairly big prices. What price is our fourth tip? It's 175 to one, my friend. Goodness me. Um, and that is Tom Lewis, who is trying to get his career back on track. His stateside career has faltered. His mission at the moment is to regain full playing rights on the DP World Tour. He's got to get in the top 120 of the DP World Tour rankings by the end of the season. He's, he's 169th at the moment. I fancy him to do it quite comfortably. It's easy to forget how good Tom Lewis is. Two-time Portugal Masters champion. He's got that tournament to come. Uh, Runner-up in the 2020 World Golf Championship in Memphis. Um, He's proven himself at a good level. He's still only 31. Got bundles to offer. And the signs are encouraging. 13th place in the Czech Masters last month. 12th place in the Maiden Himalad last time out. So, uh, yeah, each way player at enormous prices. Okay, we should talk about those at the head of the market. I mean, obviously, the conversation really needs to start with Rory McIlroy. Is this the sort of course where he could excel I suppose it comes down to a question of value, really, doesn't it, Steve, with Rory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The price is not great for a course debut. Jim. How keen is he going to be to, you know, to get to get out there and learn this course? You know, motivation has to be an issue, doesn't it? Um, you know, he's doing his bit for the DP World Tour by being here, uh, but he's got a lot on his plate and he's, he's the centre of attention. The questions will keep coming in. Patrick Reid had a big pop at him yesterday. They're bound to ask him about that. Did he? Um, Why? Oh, Patrick, we were just saying, I've done more for the for the DP World Tour than Rory McIlroy. And blah, blah, blah. Um yeah, I just think Rory might not be able to get himself up for this one, get the juices flowing. I think, it, it, yeah, I think he might take some liberties with the course. You know, Isn't it more that it's a recce as well, Steve? You know, he, he, he's here to to learn about, uh, you know, for next year for the Ryder Cup, isn't he? So perhaps he, you know, he'll, yeah. he'll have that as much in his mind as his winning. But you never know. Absolutely. I mean, if, he, if he is on his game, he's so, he could just be different class, obviously, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, if you oppose him, you have to accept that he might just come out and, and win this by half the track. You do have to accept that. But, yeah, when we talked about the course management at Shane Lowry last week. You know, that was based on you know, hunger, discipline, determination. You know, I don't think Rory McIlroy is going to have any of that this week. And it'll, it'll over attack. And I think he'll come up unstuck somewhere in the in the Marco Simone trees. OK, Fitzpatrick last week. Not a bad effort. I mean, you know, he didn't quite get there, did he? Um, could you give him a chance here? He's the most appealing of those front three. Uh, he missed the cut at the Marco Simone last year, but uh, yeah, he, he's the one with course experience out the three. His five would snapped on, on, on the aeroplane over to Italy last year, so a little excuse for him there. Um, but those last nine holes at Wentworth were poor when they two over par on that same same stretch that Rahm obliterated in 29 shots. Fitzpatrick was two over par. Maybe he's run out of puff at the end of a long season. And Hovland, class operator, and for 36 holes, looked the likeliest winner. But um, it wasn't particularly impressive on Sunday, was it? No, no, he's just, he hasn't had his A game from the Players' Championship onwards. You know, he, he just dipped a level since then. And that frailty is shown when he got on the leaderboards. He didn't look comfortable at the Open when he had a winning chance there. And then on, on Sunday, you know, some of those drives were, you know, some of the duck hooks he was doing into the trees reminded me of myself. You know, that's a shot I have in my locker. Um, and yeah, yeah, he, he, that driving was a was a big concern. You know, he hasn't got long to correct that as he going into to Italy. Particularly if this is a tight venue. Yeah, I do. I wouldn't fancy Hovland at uh, 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 twelve to one. 
If they announced that Wentworth was going to stage the Open one year, would you be pleased or do you think, oh, no, it's got to be at a Lynx course? I think it would be lovely. I love Wentworth. I think it's an absolute jewel of British golf. No, I'd be devastated. I think, you know, the, the fact is... Devastated? Devastated. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the uh, the, the Open has to be played on, on Lynx terrain. It's, it's what makes it unique. It what, what makes it so special. Don't get me started on that either. All right. <laughs> I won't. I'll get you started on the Fortinet Championship yes. instead, which is the uh, US Tour event. Is this, the, this is the start of the new season, I suppose, isn't it? Very much so, John. Hmm. Right then, Fortinet Championship. Uh, here is the field. We've got the President's Cup next week, so a lot of the big names are preparing for that, but it's still a fairly high-class one. I suppose if you take the top-tier performers out, this is the best of the rest. So, guide prices here. Matsuyama, eight, oh, sorry, Max Homer is fav at 16. And it's 18 Matsuyama, 18 Corey Connors, 25 the Gala and Maverick McNeely, 28 Taylor Pendrith, 33 Cam Davis and Tom Hoagie, Davis Riley, 35. I bet Steve tips him. 40 Emiliano Grio and 50 to 1 bar. Where are we, Steve? We're at the North Course, Silverado Resort and Spa, Napa, California. Wine 7, country. Wine country, yes, yes, yes. You like a wine, don't you? Um, 7,123 yards, par 72, four par fives, host of this event since 2014. Used to be called the Safeway Open. Uh, quite tight fairways for a resort course. Poana Greens, very small. Uh, yeah, you've got to be accurate. But if you are accurate, you can score well. OK, how many selections? I've got five. It's a really difficult event. It's wide open. I, I found it hard to get down to five. OK, who is the headline fancy? Sweet spot regular Maverick McNeely, 25 to one. Four of the last six Silverado champions have been Californian. Three of my five selections this week are Californian, including my number one choice, Mav McNeely. He's come so close to a PGA Tour victory and the two nearest misses have come in California. He loves the conditions in his home state. He was runner up to Daniel Berger in the 2021 Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Then he was runner up to Max Homer in last year's Fortinet Championship at Silverado, beaten by just a shot. He was always destined to become a PJ Tour champion. His amateur career was absolutely outstanding. I'm talking about achievements that Tiger Woods would uh, you know, raise an eyebrow to. Uh, he, was, he was world number one amateur for a long time and then made his professional debut in this tournament in 2017. He's played it every year. He knows this course better than most of the PJ Tour venues. And he just looks a winner waiting to happen. He's, he's got a great temperament. He's cool. He's calm. He's got the calmness of a man who knows he's going to become a billionaire no matter what happens on the golf course. You know, he's heir to a billion pounds. Who's his um, wife again? Who's... Oh no, his father's his father um oh, is, a, is, a, is 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 a, is a billionaire. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Doesn't Scott he have McNeely. a celebrity Scott McNeely. girlfriend though? He did. He, he was with Daniel Kang. They've had a split. They've had a split. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've had a split. So um yeah, yeah, but it, it must really relax you as a character when you know that um your father's going to give you a billion pounds at some stage. God, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Maverick McNeely is the main choice. Next up, Justin Sir. 55 to 1. He's finally got a PJ Tour card in his pocket. He won the Corn Ferry Tour Championship last time out to put the icing on the cake of a fantastic Corn Ferry Tour campaign. You, you know how excited I've been about Justin Sir from the moment I set eyes upon him. He was in that batch of college superstars who came on came out in the summer of 2019. Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, Matthew Wolf, Justin Sir. The other three made an immediate impact on the PJ Tour and away and gone. Sure had these, this, this wrist problem at the time and didn't get that, that take off that the others did. He's had to work much harder for his spot at the, at the top table. But this year, it's all happened for him. 16 top 20s in his last 20 tournaments. He's a 25-year-old oh. California. Yeah, really consistent campaign, topped off with a win. He's a 25-year-old Californian, licking his lips at uh, going to Silverado. He qualified for this event last year and he, and, and he made the cut. This time he goes there to win. S-U-H. S-U-H. Sir. OK. Yeah. Suit you, sir. Who's the third tip? <laughs> That's a good headline, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. You've predicted this one, uh, you, you, little, you little tinker. Davis Riley. I know you so <laughs> well. <laughs> 35 to 1, Davis Riley, who I think needed the break. I think he'd come back from the break full of beans. Uh, yeah, he, he would have been kicking himself in the break that he wasn't off the mark on the PJ Tour. He became a leadable regular he set up some great chances. I think it's almost inevitable that he gets the job done at some stage. He's just too good not to, to win PGA Tour titles. He's won twice on the Corn Ferry Tour. He's only 25. I think this is the year, this is the season that Riley starts winning uh, silverware. Righty-ho, who's next? Brandon Wu. 
125 to 1. Brandon Wu, the third Californian in my staking plan, another 25 year old. He won the 2020 Corn Ferry Tour Championship. Last season settled nicely on the PGA Tour. He was third in the Puerto Rico Open, second to John Rahm in the Mexico Open, sixth in a high-class Scottish Open, and eighth in the Wyndham Championship last month. I think Wu's going to have a maiden victory uh, in the near future. So, and it's B Wu. There's also a D Wu in the field, isn't there? Yeah, Dylan that's, Wu, that's so true. Yeah, watch your Wu's. Watch your Wu's. Yeah. Okay. And finally. Finally, Robbie Shelton, another 125 to one chance, back where he belongs. I always had this lad down as a, as a PGA Tour champion in the make, and he finished third in the 2015 Barbasol Championship when he was still an amateur. Amazing achievement. His college peers said he was like a robot back then. Fairway green, pup, fairway green, pup. Um, <laughs> yeah, the world was his oyster. He, he, he made golf look like a computer game, they used to say about, about Robbie Shelton. Uh, he found it so easy. But it didn't happen on the PGA Tour for him. Um, yeah, he had some issues with homesickness, actually, early in his PGA Tour oh, career. Oh, blimey. But now at the age of 27, he, he looks ready to rumble. Robbie Shelton has won four times on the Corn Ferry Tour. I think he's definitely good enough to win on the PGA Tour. Do you reckon if, you, if your life had gone as planned and you become a tour pro, do you think you'd get homesick if you were playing the US Tour? Would you have a high old time, do you think? It's entirely feasible you'd, you'd miss home, wouldn't you? If, you, if, if, if you're a sort of low-grade player having to play in every event and not seeing much of home. I mean, you know, Kiridek Epi Barmrak gave a very emotional in interview the other day about how he, he, he struggles in the States. He misses Thailand. You know, he has no one to hang around with, no ties oh. to hang around with. So Kiridek was, was pouring his heart out. Lucas Herbert, if you remember rightly, when he first came onto the tour, massive homesickness issue. He, I think he's, he's overcome now. But yeah, Robbie Shelton, I think it, it, for the younger lads, it, it can be an issue. And also, if you're not one of the absolute superstars, I know that you don't think there's any such thing as a skint golfer. But in actual fact, if you're just, you know, playing with the pressure of trying to get your card and you may be missing cut after cut, you're not actually bringing in a lot of money. And of course, it costs a lot of money to get you and you, your entourage from course to course, doesn't it? So it's, it's not point. it's not the, the land of milk and honey that everyone thinks it is, maybe. No, it's a good point. If, you, if you're struggling and missing cuts, you might be having to stay in the Premier Inn, all on your mm. own in the Premier Inn. Indeed. Have we got another one or have you said them all? No, no, that's that's the five tips for the Fortinet Championship. Um, as for the market leaders, I think Hideki Matsuyama has not been fully fit lately. He's got the President's Cup distraction next week. Max Homer should be clear favourite, but you know, I'd have him well clear of Matsuyama. But um, you know, next week's massive for Max Homer. You know, he's representing America as a pro for the first time. Maybe his eyes taken off the ball there. I like he, he comes across a very good egg on Twitter. I like him very much. OK, yeah. we will reiterate all Steve's tips at the end of the show. But first, we've got another live event. They're in Chicago, the Live Golf Invitational in Chicago. Three rounds, all the rage these days. Starts on Friday. And here is the uh, latest betting. Nine to two, Dustin Johnson. Five, Cameron Smith. Fifteen to two, Joaquin Neiman. Nine to one, Taylor Gooch. Sixteen to one, Patrick Reed. 18, Louis Oosthuizen, 20, Abraham Anser, and 25 to 1, and bigger the rest. So, Steve, 48 runners. We know the format now, shotgun, star, et cetera, et cetera. Um, tell us all about the course. I will say this, by the way. I hope it's dried out because I watched uh, an American football game in Chicago on Sunday. And it was, honestly, I've never seen rain like it. It was absolutely torrential. It was incredible. And they play in any weather in the NFL. There's, they never, ever call it off except for thunder. And they just carried on. You couldn't see the markings and the you know, yardage indicators and everything. So hopefully the weather's improved because otherwise this is going to be a big old test. That's it. No, no, no. We've got a few days till, till then, haven't we? And, and, and that actually helps my, my two selections. Got two selections at the appropriately named Rich Harvest Farms. Ooh. Rich Harvest Farms Golf Course, Sugar Grove, Illinois. There, there, there will be a rich harvest on Sunday. Twenty million dollars <laughs> sprinkled over the, the forty-eight runners. Maybe they'll get a uh, a muck spreader to to fire the dirty dollars at these uh, these lucky <laughs> rascals. <laughs> and yeah. It's a long call, so if it is wet, which it, it, it's seven thousand seven hundred and fifteen yards. That's a um, monster. Par seventy-two. They may have to play from from further forward tees. Four par fives. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's a long, hilly, tree-lined layout. There's a lake. There's some lagoons. I love saying that. It's got some lagoons. Um, numerous blind tee shots. A little bit of breeze in the forecast. So yeah, I think this is quite a demand. I think this is the hardest course they've played since Centurion. Okay. And you've got. You say you got two tips, yeah? I got two tips, both at massive prices. Righto. Away you go with your first one. 66 to 1. The prices are just coming out as we speak. A couple of firms up with prices so far. 66 to 1 with Boyle Sports. Sam Horsfield. Um, 
an incredible price. One of only a handful of players in this field with some competitive course experience. Certainly the player with the most compelling course credentials. Horsefield starred in the 2015 Western Amateur Championship at Rich Harvest. There were four rounds of stroke play competition in that event. Horsefield finished third. Massive field. Only two players outscored him over four rounds at Rich Harvest. That He was 18 years old for that and he was brilliant there. Now he returns as a 25-year-old who must have taken great confidence from the BMW PJ. There was a lot of pressure on him last week. You know, lots of noise surrounding the live golf players. Horsefield played well. He got better every day. 70, 68, 67. In it, and in his last round of live golf in Boston, he shot 65. So he's 16 under par for his last four rounds of golf. He's going to a big hitter's course with his A-game returning. He won on the DP World Tour in May. Uh, I think maybe this week he gets off the mark on, on the live golf circuit. And there's a little bit of icing on the cake. Talk about Chicago. Uh, he, 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 he's associated with Betanardi putters. He uses better. He uses a Betanardi putter. He uses a Betanardi putter, and and the Betanardi HQ is in Chicago. He's a regular wow. visitor. To, he's a regular visitor to Chicago to 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 work on his putting and sharpen up his putting. So he's comfortable in Chicago. It's a very small bit of icing on a on a very juicy cake. <laughs> What's a Betanardi putter? It's, it's a very very high quality putter. I mean, I'm a Scottish. How do you spell it? I'm a. You spell it B E T T. Uh, I N A R D I, Betanardi. Right. Yeah, Betanardi. I mean, I'm a Scotty Cameron loyalist, but I do accept that Betanardi putters are very good as well. I have an Odyssey. Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm no, just useless. No, that's, that's not bad. Well, a good workman, a good workman. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's all my fault. But uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, well, that's that's an interesting clue. But m more importantly, obviously, is the course form he showed there when he was only a nipper. Yeah, and yeah, there's only four players in this field, Bruce, with competitive course experience. You've done your research here, Steve. I'm very impressed. Right then, so we've got Sam Horsfield at 66 to 1. Who's the other tip? The other bet is a 200 to 1 chance. Uh, Eugenio Chacara, 22-year-old uh, Spaniard, turned pro in June, former world number two amateur, bursting with potential, huge scope for improvement as he settles on the live golf circuit. This week, he, he can hit the ground runner. Of course, he knows. We talked about that. Only four players. He's one of only four players who've competed at this track before. And is his, is his recent form as well. Shakara teed up in the Palmer Cup there last year. Very prestigious amateur event. A bit like the Amateur President's Cup. And he was magnificent in that. He played four matches. He won all of them. His internationals team was well beaten. Uh, but Shakara could, could, could hold his head high. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think if Eugenio Shakara can draw on that course form, he can make a mockery of 200 to 1. He may get bigger than 200 to 1. I don't know. The prices are just trickling out. Um, so uh, let, let's see. Let's see. Wow, Eugenio Lopez Shikara. That's a yeah. new name on me. Yeah. Presumably, yeah. also he's going to be, he's going to need to perform because he'd be one of the guys who, you know, if a few more defects, the guys at the bottom of that list could get shaken out. And I still don't know what happens to them. Whether they keep the money they were given to sign. Can you please try and find out for me? I think the young super, you know, the potential young superstars like him would be given more grace, if that's the right word. Than um, you know, your Adrian Otaguis. I mean, Otaguis. Yeah. Who's Otaguis out on his ear? I mean, I think a young lad like that who's you know, pledged his future to live golf early on. I think he'll, he'll be given a stay of execution if that's uh, um, if that's the right ter terminology. At the top of the market, we've got DJ and we've got Cam Smith. It's all right, relax. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on them? <laughs> um, well, Dustin Johnson, I've seen two firms. Dustin Johnson's fav with one firm. Cameron Smith is fav with another firm. So uh, it shows the quandary that the bookmakers have got. I, I'd make Dustin Johnson fav for every live event. Um, uh, but he's probably been partying since that Boston win. And you can't, yeah, you talk about Rory McIlroy lacking a bit of motivation. Into I think Dustin Johnson is a bit of a party animal. And um, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I just think I can leave him alone for this one. There, there were reasons for getting involved at the bigger price last time in, in Boston, but you know, I just like these two these two at massive prices this week. OK, right. Let's reiterate all your tips, Steve. Thank you very much for that. Great stuff. Obviously, like I say, been studying very hard. Here are your four tips for the Italian Open. Rasmus Hogard, Guido Migliosi, Minwoo Lee, Tom Lewis. We've got five in the Fortinet Championship, and they are? Maverick McNeely, Justin Sir. Davis Riley, Brandon Wu, and Robbie Shelton. And the two for the Live Golf Chicago. Sam Horsfield and Eugenio Chakara. Brilliant. And have you got an exotic bet for us? A life <laughs> well, changer. 
Yes, let's have some each way trebles. I mean, yeah, the, the, the main each way treble for me will be Rasmus Hogard, Maverick McNeely, and Sam Horsfield. Um, when that wins, I will be uh, tending my resignation with a spatula full of spittle on Monday oh. morning. Who to? Your line manager, yeah? Just Not me. whoever I can get my hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fine. Brilliant. All right, Steve, well done. Excellent stuff. Well done again last week with Shane Lowry. Thank you very much for the nice messages you sent to Steve, both on the comments and also via me on Twitter, because Steve's not on Twitter. You're not making a Twitter return anytime soon, no, are you? No, 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 no. I appreciate very the, wise. I appreciate no. the messages and I appreciate you pointing them out to me. Absolutely. Let us know who you fancy this week in the comments section. If you enjoyed the show, we'd love you to hit that thumbs up. Most of all, Bet safely, bet responsibly, have fun. Hope the golf goes well for you this week. We're back next Tuesday with another sweet spot with a look at the President's Cup and the French Open. Mm-hmm.